All right, today we continue on with our Chargers study ball series. We looked at Justin Herbert, their offense early in the week. Now we're going to take a look at their defense. And as I said last week, uh, Gus Bradley going to the Raiders. And so the defense you're going to see is the Gus Bradley version of the Chargers defense, probably going to change. Uh, if we look back and see what the Rams did last year, probably going to expect more of that from the Chargers. But breaking down last year, taking a look at what these teams did last year, and maybe for those that uh, want to know what the Raiders are going to do this year with Gus Bradley at the helm, this is a look at that. But there's a number of teams in the league that play what I call Seattle cover three, which is what Coach Bradley likes to major in. And so we're going to take a look at that today, even if it doesn't have huge relevance to what the Chargers are going to do this year defensively. All right, so Seattle cover three. Okay, cover three as we know it. Deep third, deep third. One of these safeties is going to play deep third, and that puts four guys in some capacity working the underneath zones on the field. Okay, the difference about Seattle cover three from other cover threes is what they do with their backside linebacker. So you're going to see here, um, looks like man-to-man -man backside. This guy's here. The safety's staying high there, but this guy's playing hook to flat. This guy here is playing middle to hook. This guy here is playing hook to flat, and this safety's dropping down to play backside middle to hook area, but he also turns and runs. Anytime a team has three receivers to the strong side, this backside linebacker, whether he's a safety or a linebacker, comes down and is ready to chase to the backside hole. Why is that? Well, we looked at the Chargers offense uh, earlier in the week and we saw a couple seam throws. So this and this. It's designed to isolate and to beat cover three because these are the weak areas on the field. So you isolate that free safety and you take one of those two shots. Well, this defense is designed to know, hey, I know that's my weakness. I want to come down and play cover three, but if this guy runs vertical, I'm going to chase him to help my safety on the back side and make these seams more difficult to hit. So here you see it, right? We're running through. We're going to run with him. Now my safety can overplay to that side, and we're going to make these double seam concepts a little bit more tougher on the offense, forces him to hold the football, and leads to a sack there. Okay, here we go. Once again, you'll see it. Three receivers, one, two, three, to that side. So here, here's my backside backer. He's going to cover anything in his zone. But if one of these guys goes and goes vertical, I am going to turn and chase him once again. There you go. There you see it. Turn, chase him, take away that deep over that everybody wants to hit against cover three, and then everybody else play your cover three zones. Three by one once again. Recognize our backside linebacker. Always have to recognize the backside linebacker trying to get Darren Waller on him, trying to hit the double seams again. Right here, this safety overplays there. This guy runs back with that seam. Don't really have anything. So now you're trying to isolate that backside backer with your choice route and your back. That's your completion, but not a big play. Trying to prevent the big play. That's the big thing. Talked about it. Raiders last year gave up the big play. Gus Bradley's coming in. His goal, not to give up the big play, but you're going to see them major in this Seattle cover three because it was started with Gus Bradley and all those guys in Seattle, the Legion of Boom. And so now you see it. It looks kind of funny. Looks like this is the inside backer, but he's going to overplay this way. Now the safety's going to drop back and become the inside backside backer. And what's he going to do? He's going to try to move over there. And this is how we're going to take advantage of it. So we're going to take a look at, we already take a look at what they do. Now, how do you take advantage of this Seattle cover three? Well, you put your three receivers over here once again. You try to get somebody going down the middle to get this guy to engage and cover them. And then one way is we're going to attack these two guys backside. If this guy wants to stay backside, now we can work our stuff with our three receivers front side. If he wants to get into the mix front side, 
Now we'll attack his void on the backside. So it's not just about what defenses are doing, but it's how we as an offense will attack them, and you see it. This guy's waiting for somebody to go vertical, waiting for somebody to go vertical, boom. As we do that, we're just going to hit it right behind him and go get ourselves a big play. Nice job there. Try to stick it in there. Good read by Derek Carr, but just good defense by the corner to understand once again the weaknesses and to be able to take advantage of it. All right, here we go again. Okay, what's another way? Okay, we're going to get these guys out of here. Now we're going to take advantage of this guy. We're going to go with Darren Waller up over the top. Now we're going to replace him with a shallow underneath, knowing what he wants to do, knowing how these guys want to play. And now Derek Carr is going to go and try to get this over the top and beat this. But here's the throw right there. That guy wants to turn and run, hit this right here, keep that guy running, make that front side backer have to come cover him. But you got Darren Waller. You can take some of these chances and try to go get a big play there. But to me, this is simple. We're trying to just isolate that guy. Read that guy, quarterbacks. Read the defense. He turns and runs. Replace, replace, replace. Don't overthink it. Don't have to try to go get the big play all the time. Just read it out if you know how to attack this Seattle cover three. All right, now we're going to move into a two-by-two two look. So, two-by-two two look. Now, it becomes more conventional cover three. So, two-by-two, two, we don't have that third guy strong where the backer's looking. There, 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 there. So, now, when you go two-by-two, two, you can attack this defense. That's cover three just like you would every other cover three. So, we're going to get out of here. We're going to take this corner out with us. We're going to go flat. We're going to go hook. Boom, boom. Now, because we don't have anybody running over because they're not conscious of a three strong, because your third guy is your back, there's a second level coming right there. There's the window. If you got time to throw it, that's how you attack this Seattle cover three because it really just becomes conventional cover three against a two by two. One more time, three by one, three by one, three by one. We know this guy is going to be conscious of number three, who's running this vertical down here, but another way to attack it is let's make a play fake, right? Let's get this safety down here, whoever that is in the box there. Let's put something coming at him because now we know he wants to turn and run deep. We give him a run fake and he's got to step up. Man, now his responsibility of number three has to be voided. You see the play fake right there. There's a play fake. That's all we need. Him coming up, his job is number three. This safety is overplaying to the strong side. Bingo. Now we got our shot. Now we got an easy touchdown up over the top. Safety's going, Where, where's my help? Where's my help? But really nothing that that backside safety can do. He's got to step up with that run fake. And that's the kind of stuff that gives this defense problems. Understanding where the weakness is. So... Here we go. We said two by two, it's normally a more conventional cover three. So this guy here in a conventional cover three should be playing this hook area. But sometimes they mess this up because they're so used to pushing to the field and being ready for that vertical, and especially against this Kansas City team that loves to run that vertical. So now you see it, this backside backer, for whatever reason, is turning and walling, even though they've only got Two receivers over there. He's turning and walling. Now we're isolated on the backside, two on one, based on that backer. It's kind of the same idea that Buffalo had. If this guy works over here, that guy works to the flat, now we can work this over to the second level. So all we got to do is isolate that guy, make the game easy off of that backside, inside linebacker, get the ball out of your hands, get a big play. So there you go. That's what the Chargers did last year. We expect something completely different this year with Coach Daly coming over uh, and, and bringing probably what he did with the Rams. But that's a look at what Seattle cover three looks like. You'll see a number of teams that run that Seattle cover three. Dan Quinn likes to run it. You're probably going to see it in Dallas. You're going to see it in Vegas with Gus Bradley. And so that gives you an idea of what Seattle cover three is. 
and a great look at how you can defeat it or how you can attack it if you know what you're looking for. And that's the key to everything offensively is knowing what the responsibilities within a defense are and then being able to attack those responsibilities. We saw that on a number of plays there, but uh, you'll see that defense numerous times, even if it's not in L.A. with the Chargers. You'll see it numerous times throughout the league, um, and, and that's um, you know, it's a prominent thing that we're seeing nowadays. Started in Seattle, now it's kind of trickled throughout the league. I'm excited to see what the Chargers will be, but that's a look at what they did last year.